Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. This video is going to be a two-parter, so I'm going to make another video uh, on the subject, and this is going to cover quality of service on Mikrotik routers. Now, quality of service is something that a lot of people are intrigued or interested about because it allows you a way to effectively guarantee bandwidth to certain users. You could probably give some people more or a little less, or you could prioritize some um, specific protocols on the network so that people have a better performance whenever they're maybe browsing or gaming or downloading or something. So QoS is definitely something a lot of people are interested in. And I will be trying to cover how to set up QoS in a few manners. And in this first video, we're going to be covering how to set up simple queues. So I'll explain to you what they are, how to configure it, and then we'll also test some of the queues to see if they're working. So if this is something that you wanna check out, let's jump into the video. Now let's talk about simple queues on Mikrotik routers. So before I go into any explanation of what's happening, let's just first log into Mikrotik. So you can see our topology here, it's pretty basic. We've got three clients, each client connects to their own router and their routers will connect back to our ISP Mikrotik, which will grant them internet access. Now, I'm just gonna winbox onto R1 I already have this Winbox session open here. And if we wanna see queues, what we can do is we can click on the queues tab in the management side. And your first thing that you'll see is simple queues. So in our next video, we will be going over the interface queues, queue trees and queue types, all that kind of cool stuff. But for now, we just wanna focus on simple queues. Now. What is a simple queue? As the name implies, it's a simple way of configuring QoS so that you can shape traffic or limit the amount of bandwidth certain users or interfaces can consume on the network. So this can be very handy if you want to maybe prioritize certain traffic. So let's say you want to make sure that people always get the best browsing experience. So maybe you could prioritize HTTP and HTTPS traffic, uh, but you might uh, throttle stuff like downloads like uTorrent or, or BitTorrent or those type of services just so that the network feels a lot better when people use it so if they're browsing it's uninterrupted they're getting their emails just fine it just may be the downloading that might be slow but you can also change that around you can make the download super fast and make the browsing a little less um, <laughs> impactful but I mean that, that that would probably be a silly thing to do because then your users would be like the internet's slow, the internet's slow. So a lot of times Q is, is a way that we can make sure the internet doesn't appear slow, that it's always working correctly. So if we wanna implement a simple queue, all that we need to do is we need to click on this plus. And then from this plus, you'll see there's a bunch of options that you get. The first thing we're gonna be in is the general tab. So the general tab allows us to give the queue that we're going to configure a name. So we could just call this something like WAN data and your target, this, you could almost think of your source or what you're binding the QoS to, what you're going to be shaping. So a target is by default, it's on 0.0.0.0 slash zero, which means everywhere. But there's a few things you can do. You could also click on this drop down menu and then you could select this physical interface. So if I look at my topology, Ether1 goes to my internet. So I, if I put this to Ether1, any traffic flowing through Ether1 would effectively have uh, QoS applied to it. So basically its downloads and its uploads would be affected. Your, the, the, before I I'm, I'm go to the next section, what else you can do with the target? You could also specify specifically an IP address. So if you know, um, let's look back at our topology Here's an IP between router 1 and router 2, 10.1.0.1 is router 1, dot 2 is router 2. So if I wanted to maybe rate limit or shape the traffic from router 2, I could just put in router 2's IP address in Winbox on that target. So I could say anything from 10.1.0.2. I want to shape traffic from that. Um, another thing that you could do is you could hit this little down button 
and it will add another row so that you can add more things to this specific quality of service that you're adding. So I could also add an interface or I could add another router's address. Maybe if we look at that topology, router 3's address and router 4's address. So we could do that as well. So now in this type of QoS, now I have all three of my client routers, which could also just be APs or computers or whatever. So it also doesn't just have to be an IP address. You could also use a subnet mask. So we could use something like 172.16.00/24 or whatever subnet you wanted um, to apply the QoS to. But for my purposes, where we're beginning, we're just going to use an interface. So I'm just going to remove these rows and now we're just going to select an interface. So I'm going to select Ether2 which is one of the interfaces going to my client routers. It's going to router two. And then we know that's going to be the target, the source. Our destination, well, things that we could do is we could probably add stuff like um, the LAN range behind router two, but that's not really going to do anything in this case because I'm natting traffic out of that router. But whenever you specify a destination, think of this as the communication between your target, your source, and where it's connecting to. So you could effectively make queues for specific destinations, maybe to Microsoft's IP addresses. You want to limit um, stuff for like Windows updates so that a lot of the traffic isn't being consumed. This is what you would use the destination for. If you leave it blank, it's basically just going anywhere, but you could also use the 0.0.0.0 slash zero subnet. And then it would also do the same thing as if when you left it blank. Now, the next big thing, and this is where <laughs> a lot of people seem to get lost, but you shouldn't. This is also the fun part about the QoS is your target upload and your target download. So the target upload directly refers to your target that you defined here. So your source. So we want to say our target, what is it? What is its maximum limit that it can do when it needs to upload? how much traffic can it send out so if you click on this drop down menu there's already a bunch of pre-configured options if you leave it unlimited it, it does what it says then there's no Q, qs or there's no shaping taking place on the bandwidth but we could maybe make it something smaller so for this demonstration i'm going to use maybe 128k for our up and our down and I'm not going to go into the burst limit just yet. I'll go into it in a little while in either the time. So let's just apply this so that you can see what happens. So I've applied it and then in the background, you'll see in the queue list, we have this queue that we created, a simple queue. And it's already showing us your name, your target, your maximum upload and download. And then very interesting, you can see this little green icon thing here right next to the name. So You'll see once the queue gets used, this icon will change colors. It will go to yellow when it's starting to exceed its threshold. And it will also become red if the capacity is being hit quite consistently. So that will also be a good indication to you that people, they're actively using the service. So you could probably either increase that or maybe your QoS is doing its job. So one thing to take note of with the Micritix QoS or the simple queue when you configure it, it's basically slowing down the packet. So it's not just making a hard ceiling on the bandwidth and then only that much can go uh, through the interface. Ideally what it's doing is it's putting up a firewall rule. It's not really a firewall rule, but to make sense of it, I want you to think of it in such a way that it's creating a rule that whenever the connection is established and formed, if you've done any other type of networking course, you, you've learned about TCP window sliding. So you know how when you copy a file, the file starts very small and then the copy starts to become bigger and bigger because of the amount of bandwidth the connection can push through. So what we're doing with the simple queue is we're putting a limit on that. So the packets, once they hit 128K in, in this case, it will basically start dropping the packets so that they're forced to be resent so that it shouldn't just consistently exceed that limit. So that's what's cool about the queue and that is something that you need to take note of as well. So you're not going to 
lose any connectivity it just means that it's going to take longer for packets to arrive because they're going to have to be resent because of this uh, windowing that's happening okay so let's quickly test and see if the queue is working and the way i'm going to do this is from router 2 so i'm just going to open up another winbox session to router 2 and i'll just connect to ramon on router 1 find router 2 and connect to it so what we should be seeing is if I go into my tools and I go to my bandwidth test, I can quickly connect to the 10.1.0.1 IP, which is router one's IP address. And I can run a bandwidth test and see what's happening. So let's maybe run it on both up and down. And I'm going to start this test. Let's just maximize that. See what the test is doing. And there our test is running so we did put up traffic control for 128 kilobits and what's happening now is it is actually it can like I explained because of the windowing it, there's some packets that do go over that limit but ideally the roof should be staying pretty consistent around that 128k mark so while this bandwidth test is running Let's head back to router one and there we see there's our WAN one and the icons turned red because the queue can see it's consistently hitting this 128k. If I look at the traffic, we can see traffic is being spotted on this queue. So that is pretty good actually. And what we can do now is let's increase this limit. So let's make this maybe 256 on up and down. We're going to apply that. And let's head back to router 2 and there we can already see the traffic did spike up a bit there but it's not really doing what I'm expecting it to let's just stop the test and redo it but maybe just on receive let's start our test it is running and there we can see it it did get to 156 kilobits so it's averaging around there. Let's stop that, maybe run it as TCP. There we go, that, that's more that I expect to see. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just basically that window sliding that's happening. All right, so we can definitely see our queue is being applied there. Let's jump back to router one. And we can see we're maxing out that limit. So let's just maybe remove this completely, just make it unlimited and apply. And let's go back to router two and look at the bandwidth test. I think I might've closed it. Okay, let's just start it again. And let's just see what we're we getting now. Ooh, I dropped. <laughs> the test was so good that it dropped. Okay, I think router 2, I just need to reconnect to it on Roman. But that, that's a part of the difficulties running a, let's say, a virtual emulated topology. So this, this isn't something you'd see typically on real routers. Okay, 10.1.0.1. Let's run its TCP again. Let's start and see what's happening. And it's busy connecting and it's connected and there we go for a second there i got two megabits per second but since the os of the chr on its trial version is only going to allow me one meg you can see that's basically what i'm getting um the traffic queue is not really going to reflect that because we've set that to unlimited but if i set it to 1m you'll also basically see that the queue is gonna be hit the whole time so if I go to my traffic and I look here, there we go. Icon's gone red and it's because of the queue. So another cool thing or something that I want to teach you about these queues, you can add multiple queues. So I could add another queue and it could be doing the same thing. We could call it WAN data 2 maybe. And the interface is Ether 2. But we want to maybe specify other things inside this so let, let's just set a limit of 128 again on both the up and down 
and apply it again. What do you think is going to happen? So there's two queues now, a data and a data two. And I can see this one keeps getting hit, but the 128 one, it's not really doing anything now. And it is because these are the same queues effectively. If I wanted to force the second queue to work, these queues work very similar to firewall rules. They work in a priority. So basically it will read the first one above and then it will start looking at everything down below it. So I could just push this. I could just drag and drop this above it. And now WAN2 will take this, this WAN data2 will take priority. And then <laughs> this other um, policy would basically become redundant. So that's how you would configure very basic simple queues in order to limit traffic on maybe an interface or an ip or anything really even a subnet so we will be going into more detailed things like bursting schedules and the different interface queues types and trees and all that in the upcoming video so that's something to look forward to but i just wanted you to get a taste of how to set up a simple queue and it should be very very quick and easy for you to set up so thank you for watching if you're not subscribed yet i'd like to remind you to subscribe if you do like this content and i'll catch you in the next video see ya